Hey there, hello folks, and um, this is my first uh, little post uh, for a while, and I can say I am now back at home. Yes! Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, I just want to start off uh, with just uh, saying, um, just to let everyone know, thank you so much for all the new subscribers. It is wonderful to see you and all the new comments and uh, everything that you have left on my channel and uh, for signing up. That is wonderful. Also, I want to say is um, I've been doing my best to be in touch uh, with everyone. And apologies if you've uh, if you've sent me an email to my info box and I've not got back yet. Um, I've uh, it's Mercury retrograde and basically I've had an absolute doozy on this one. <laughs> you would have seen on my last uh, post where I was um, posting from a from a from a hotel room. And basically everything that could go wrong with technical things went wrong. So um, first of all, I was away uh, and then I was spending uh, 12 hours on set and it was night shoot. So I was finishing at 3 a.m. Uh, in the morning, <laughs> which is not always uh, conducive. And uh, But I was on set for 12 hours, so for at least half of the day. And then, of course, trying to do emails uh, then. On top of that, my laptop crashed, uh, as you would have seen in my um, previous video, but I now have a new uh, laptop, thank goodness, so now I can run my software. So at one point, I literally didn't have a laptop in order to run my software off to do my charts. So anyone that's had a consultation with me, you will see something similar, uh, well, basically pretty much the same. Uh, as that so of course I need my software and I need to get stuff printed off for that eventually got my new laptop home uh, which was great and then my internet crashed at home so I had no home internet so I had to do uh, I was in the middle of a consultation and it and it basically cut off half the way through and then I had to use my phone data and WhatsApp to finish the call. So um, so I just want to say a big shout out and thank you to Ella. You know who you are if you're watching this um, for being so patient for that because we started off on Zoom and then we had to go to WhatsApp. Uh, and then at that point, my home internet crashed and then I had to do my next consultation at a local cafe. <laughs> Which was very stressful. I had to run and literally take all my equipment, my new laptop, etc., set myself up in this place. And the internet there kept on chopping out. So I just want to say a big shout out to Jackie. And again, thank you so much for your patience uh, with that because literally it, it, that consultation ended up being kind of cut into five pieces. So as promised for the both of you, I will give you um, a free follow up. Um, because we, we got interrupted, but those things were beyond my control. That is a Mercury retrograde, and my goodness, that was uh, a huge one. And that brings me to the main topic. Um, two, we're going to have uh, two main topics today. Um, and the first one is going to be about the US election. Now, you don't need me to tell you that this election is very significant. Now, many of my uh, subscribers are also subscribers of Diane's tarot, who we know we love Diane. What a tarot reader she is, a great talent, very gifted, very connected. And of course, the video that we did together on her channel, and I think I've got it in my interview section, so I just need to just double double check. But we talked about the USA election. So of course here you can see the USA chart. And then I overlaid with uh, tracing paper, I overlaid Donald Trump's chart, Joe Biden's chart, and Kamala Harris's chart with the chart, with the US constitutional chart to see those blendings and those matchings. And, <laughs> This US election is probably the most, in fact, I'm not even going to say probably, it is the most significant 
and important democratic election to ever happen on planet Earth. And that might really sound like hyperbole, but I think we're all feeling the energies and, and we know it's true. And the choices couldn't be more stark um, for whoever is the winner. Now, we don't have long. Today is the 1st of November. So just want to say that today is the 1st of November. I'll be doing a blog later on as well about the elections where I can go into a little bit more detail. I'll probably do that in the evening and I'll try and release the blog uh, or links to the blog uh, with the video at the same time. So everything is all set up so you can have it all at once. And I will also include in there um, a blog that I wrote back in March. Now, this is long before um, my um, my collaboration with Diane. But in there, I kind of predict um, a lot of what I thought would happen in the USA. And unfortunately, it's basically all come true. The whole shebang. But rather than going into all the details or whatever, I will let you read that blog. Um, and that will be posted as a link uh, below this video. And I'll just basically try and coordinate all so it all happens at the same time. Now, depending on whether you are Democrat or Republican, what I like to do is, in terms of my charts and, uh, and how I describe things, I like to describe the energies. Because whatever you believe in is whatever you believe in. But there are consequences for who wins this election and whoever wins this election will have a huge impact, not only on America, but the world. Um, and to kind of just describe the energies, how they kind of work. Um, if we were to say when in terms of how the charts interact with the USA charts. So if we look at. Trump's chart and if you want uh, I'll also put a link to that original video <clears throat> that I did with Diane's Tarot just in case you've not seen it and that so you can just basically see that when you overlay that the effect that Trump has on America's chart it is almost as if Trump is like an angel of death and I know that sounds extraordinarily extreme, but Donald Trump's 12th house sits over the top of the USA's 8th house. The 12th house is the house of loss, losses, death. Um, it is uh, foreign things. It can even refer to foreign interference when we're talking about mundane charts. It is separation, isolation, things that are far, far away. Now, the positive side of that in, in, a, personal, in a person's personal chart is that can be a long distance holiday, a spiritual pilgrimage, etc. But we need to understand that a leader's energy combines with their nation's chart. And when you have a leader's 12th house that connects with another Dustana house, which is the 8th house in the USA chart, the eighth house is the most challenging of all of the houses. There is beauty to it as well because there is transformation and there is healing. It also covers astrology and all the various different ologies and meditation and kundalini. But it's also shocks and surprises. It's also death. Yeah. So when we think about that, you have Donald Trump's chart, his 12th house, which has got Saturn in there, major malefic, Pluto, which is the planet of death and rebirth. And it's also Venus as well in there as well, which is about relationships, which is also the planet of wealth, which is also the planet of women, too, along with the moon. So that energy is being brought to America's eighth house, which is very challenging because Mercury in America's chart is almost like a dark prince in a way, because he is the major um, dispositor for the whole of the chart, but he doesn't do very well in the sign of cancer, which is here. The eighth house for a Sagittarius ascendant is the sign of cancer. 
And it's not just that, it's because he's with Rahu. Now, uh, Mercury takes on the characteristics of whatever planet he's with. He's innately benefic, but like human beings, we're affected by the company that we keep. And Rahu is a highly malefic uh, planet. He can be wonderful as well. But when Rahu's in the eighth house, as it is in the UK, uh, sorry, in the USA chart, and in the sign of Cancer, which is not necessarily the best sign for him because he prefers to be in Earth signs and air signs. So by transit, he's actually in Taurus, recently went in on the 19th of September. So Rahu is actually very strong and so is Ketu. But in the USA chart, he's in the eighth house. This is highly malefic. It's very, very challenging. And I, I do readings for people. Anyone that has got Rahu in the eighth house, my goodness, that's a lot to deal with. Um, so you can imagine Trump's chart is triggering that. And that's just objectively. Yeah, I don't want to demonize. This is just the energies, how they flow. Joe Biden also has a connection with the eighth house of the USA chart. But his Jupiter there and Jupiter is the great benefic and in his chart his Jupiter is exalted and so with Biden he wants to heal America's eighth house issues because eighth house also deals a lot with it deals with taboos but it also deals with addiction because there is an opioid crisis, as we know, unfolding. And many of you uh, viewers, especially from those from America, will have been touched by this. So we understand that this is no joke and it is a very significant thing. And I've spoke about the isolation of the moon and how the moon um, turns to drugs and pharmaceuticals for support. This is already covered in Diane's tarot. So Biden is going to try and heal that. And he's already announced policies on that. And of course, he wants to do things with health care, et cetera, et cetera. So we know what will happen depending on who wins. So I just wanted to put that to emphasize some of that. And I'll probably do a full breakdown um, of uh, the US election, probably just after the US, US election to help people understand what's going on. Another thing that's important is to understand this. Mercury is retrograde at the moment, so I've already explained the disaster that I've had. Mercury's communications, uh, electronics, emails, um, but he, cover, he covers all sorts of transport and correspondence. This is why I call this the Gemini disease, because Gemini, in terms of the body being the third sign, um, Aries is the top of the head. Taurus is face and neck. Gemini is hands, arms, torso and the upper lungs. So this is why I said it is a Gemini disease. COVID-19 is a Gemini disease because it affects what? Our travel, our communication. It's spread by communication. It's spread by touching things, the hands. Yeah. So this means and Mercury has been retrograde. So you can imagine this planet is going backwards. So whenever the planet is going re retrograde, we seem to always see a doubt, you know, things go for the worse in terms of the virus. So I want to kind of get that one um, there, uh, out there as well. On the day of the election, Mercury goes stationary direct. So what this means is what's happening now is, and this is probably why I've, I've had this Mercury <laughs> retrograde so bad in the last few days, is that Mercury is slowing down. So his backward motion, depending uh, how we're looking at this, is slowing down. And then he's going to go direct. And there's something very important that happens with this U.S. election with Mercury. Now, remember, Mercury also covers post, mail, yeah, communications, voting. Think of the postal service, which is called Hermes. Hermes is the other, other name for Mercury. Uh, Hermes is the god of communication, messenger of the gods. Mercury will go stationary direct on the day of the election. And that means Mercury stops. 
So if I were to just say here, Mercury's was going retrograde, going backwards, what happens is he slows up, stops, and then starts to go forward. Whenever a planet stops, whatever it, whenever a planet changes direction, whatever it refers to also changes direction as well. So it's virtually guaranteed that we will not know who the president of the United States is on the day. And you know, the last time this happened, it was back in 2000 and it was between Gore and Bush. The same thing happened. So you're getting the same energy again. So I'm sure the, any, anyone that's American or very closely connected with America is probably going, oh my goodness. And I'm just like, yes, I know you just can't make this stuff up. But it is what it is. So people have to stay calm. People have to stay patient because the result will not be known immediately. Another thing I want to mention as well is um, Saturn is going direct. Saturn is immensely powerful. Saturn is now in sidereal Capricorn, which is America's second house. And I've already gone into that, why that's so important, because it's the house of nourishment, comfort, money, etc. And Saturn is going to be powerful for the next five years. He rules Capricorn and he rules Aquarius. His signs are back to back. So Saturn is the planet of lockdown. That's how I'm describing. Saturn is the planet of lockdown. So and he is very closely connected with the virus as well, because he brings what the restrictions, the government restrictions, pulling everything back, confinement, discipline, um, all of these things, these rules and regulations, these things that we have to do. And um, so he's going to be powerful for the next five years. The Saturn also represents the government as well and government structures. He also represents the corporate corporate world, corporate finance, especially via his sign of Capricorn. And then um, Aquarius is distribution systems, technology, um, our networking, um, how things are coordinated all around the world. It, it's like a super expanded version of the third house in a way. And so you can see Saturn is extremely significant. So we really are, Saturn is the planet of karma. He gives us our just desserts. And the thing what he does is he's all about discipline. Now, what is going to happen is this. When Saturn is in his own signs, karma speeds up. You will notice that everything that is happening. So... All those decisions that we've made coming up to, up into these uh, up until this point for you know the good the bad or the ugly are all ripening now. If you if a person or institutions or governments or you know the collective hasn't done the work required in terms of going to that next level of maturity because Saturn is the planet of maturity. He's going to be very harsh. Saturn is very harsh on the undisciplined. If we've been in between, then you'll get a mix. But if you've sown good seeds and you, you know, you've been disciplined and you stuck the course, even when it's been difficult or challenging, this is also a time of great rewards. It's a contradiction because you go hoagie. Oh, my goodness. Like, you know, the world is falling apart and. In a way, it really feels it is because there is so much going on. So much things have to die. Pluto, the planet of death and rebirth, is also powerful. Going to be making a very powerful conjunction with Jupiter very soon. I'll try and get that date in because it escapes me just now. And then um, he'll be also joining the big, you know, the big conjunction and all of that, all of that stuff that I've mentioned on Dian's Tarot, where on the solstice, Jupiter and Saturn come together and basically completely reset things. Pluto comes in and does his bit as well. And when Pluto's involved in this kind of stuff, that is major, major, major changes. So this is the time of spiritual awakening of this is the time for everyone to do their best to mature spiritually and 
understand and have a reckoning and acceptance of certain things uh, collectively in our lives that need restructuring, need change. Everyone, so many people are going through so many changes at once. The virus alone is just that. But think of the emotional, psychological and spiritual and physical consequences of, of the big C and how that's affected things particularly when it comes to America, because we know the virus is now out of control. And basically the government has just said, well, there's nothing we can do about it. Not a great response at all. But this wave is going to be even more significant because what I want to share is this. Winter is Saturn's season. And you could say winter is coming, you know, to, you know, if we were to take um, a GOT Game of Thrones look at look at it, we're in for really quite a challenging winter. So it's going to require resilience. It's going to require resilience to get through uh, uh, get through these next months. Also, as well, like I mentioned in uh, with my previous blog, check check that blog out when I post that link. One of the challenges of this time, actually for America, not only is the foreign interference, but also as well the domestic terrorist element. I don't need to elaborate to people uh, on this channel or the, because so many of you would have come over from Diane's Tarot and you would already been aware of these uh, factors because that was why I was invited on in the first place. So really the biggest danger or, or pressure is coming from within. However, there is hope. There is hope. So if Biden, what I would say, if Biden wins, then there is definitely a chance. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect because remember, a lot has been unleashed. A big genie has been let out of the bottle because someone, you know, with orange hands has really rubbed that really quite hot, shall we say, <laughs> or maybe orange face. <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, I don't want to be I don't want to be too bad. But the genie is out the bottle. We all feel this. Yeah. Certain things have been set in motion. So even if uh, Biden were to win, it doesn't mean the problems will be over. There's going to be lots of chop and change. The, the weather, the astrolo astrological weather is profound at the moment. However, I want to say um, we collectively as humanity, we need to come together. And also as well, we need to pray. We need to get the highest aspect of the planets working because they manifest all their energies all at the same time. So one of the, the, the main uh, dark energy of Saturn is fear. And we know fear is extremely powerful, but the highest energy of Saturn is magic. Yeah. Knowledge, wisdom, technology. So we can manifest that higher energy as well because we're going into his age. We're going into the age of Aquarius. And Aquarius is about humanity. It's about sharing. It is about decency. It is about equality for all. Yeah, think of the big battles that are going on now about what? Equality. We're with that energy of the 60s again. So... And think about what was going on, what happened in the 60s, how much society changed. We had the civil rights movement and now we have, you know, Black Lives Matter. But we also have Me Too as well. Do you remember the Me Too movement and all the various different movements that are going on? So it can seem to a lot of people like, oh, my goodness, the whole world and his wife is calling out for equality. Why can't we just have some peace and quiet? And I can understand that energy, too, because it's immensely disruptive. But the energies are the energies and we are moving into a Saturnian age, quite literally, because he's going to be in charge for the next five years. So we need to go with it. This is about unity. This is about bringing people together. This is about community. This is about love. This is about sharing. This is about alchemy, transformation and magic. So this is about looking at your life, looking at the people that are that are with you, looking at those that you are that you love and thinking of how you can help. This is not the time to be selfish right now. 
It really isn't because we, we're going to see that those that have been sowing discord and doing this, that, any other, depending on who wins the election or steals it. <laughs> Sorry, I had to fling that in there. Um, that karma will be ripening. So those that have been, let's say, dealing in darkness, shall we say, or observing darkness and being quiet, Saturn keeps score. This is not the time to be doing anything like that, because trust me, when he's in charge, he's in charge. Remember, it's for the next five years. So this is the time to reach for the light. This is the time to reach out. This is the time to communicate. This is the time to forgive. This is the time to um, correct wrongs. If you feel like you've, 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 you've done something wrong to someone, even if it's not come up as a conversation, but you know inside of your heart that is true, if you can get in touch with that person, just say, I'm sorry. I forgive. Can you forgive me? If you receive a message like that from someone spontaneously out of the blue and you can find it in your heart to forgive them, forgive them. It will raise the vibration uh, of the planet, but also as well, it will free you. This is not the time to have ballast. As you know, what's ballast? The bags on the hot air balloon, yeah, which keep the balloon down. We need to cut ballast. We need to make peace and um, try not to fight and conflict with each other. You're going to see a lot of cray cray happening. It's already happened, man. There's going to be more. I can't say that there's not going to be more, but this is also an opportunity to develop and grow. Saturn is all about backbone as well. We need to be strong. We're going to have to face some stuff. We're going to find out some stuff. There's going to be some real cray cray going on. And like I said, you know, sorry to use a, you know, a rude word, but it's batshit right now. <laughs> there's no other word for it. it it's totally bonkers isn't it and it's all flying everywhere so you need to find your inner peace make peace with yourself and with others forgive yourself too and i also mentioned too as well about in uh, diane's tarot's video um, about forgiving our mothers because we need to strengthen this moon even if she left you in a dustbin yeah find some way to forgive her yeah it will strengthen that moon. It will help America. Likewise as well for your fathers too. Try and forgive your father as well, your papa. Um, our parents in general, you know, they have the hugest influence on us. And, um, you know, sometimes they mess up, yeah? And they don't really mean to. And if they are, if they deliberately do, then of course, that is a different, that is a different scenario because we, sometimes there are some things we can't forgive. But if you can, please do. It will raise the vibration. It will help. So I'm keeping this one short uh, and sweet because um, I don't want the video to be too long. This is a profound election for those reasons that I said. Um, this is a time for prayer, reflection, advice, but ultimately for forgiveness, community, reaching out. Letting bygones be bygones and forgiving, you know, what you can. Because this energy of anger and rage is too toxic. And we can't stay this way because it's affecting the earth. You know, we're getting earth shakes, imbalances, storms. I mean, look, we've had a massive earthquake in Turkey. There's going to be changes in China and all over the world. But we need to have that inner calm and serenity, even as things are falling apart around us. And one of the best ways to do that is to get together, even if we can't be physically together, but to create peace and forgiveness and just send a nice message, you know, if you can. And if you feel like you want to say something harsh or cruel to someone, just mm, reel it back in if you can. Um, but at the same time, be truthful, be transparent, be honest and do your best to forgive lighten yourself and your energy irrespective of what your circumstances are even though that is challenging and try and purify and clear your heart because 
it's needed. The world is in turmoil right now. And what we need is calm and peace and understanding and forgiveness and community. So with that, I will leave it there. Quite a quick one for me because my uh, brother's popping over for a consultation. And um, I wish everyone the best. So basically, buckle up your bra straps and buckle up your seat belts because it is going to be a bumpy ride. We all know this. And I'm not going to say it's all going to be hunky-dory because it isn't. We are in a time of immense flux and change on earth. But when we forgive, when we let go, when we grow our backbone and we mature emotionally, spiritually, physically, and in all the other ways that we need to mature, then we take everything to a higher place and that will help. So I wish America the best. Only a couple of days to go and let's see who wins. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> oh, before I forgot, if you'd like a consultation with me, of course, many of you are booking, which is wonderful. Then, of course, go to my uh, website, thearchetypalblueprint.com. And please like and subscribe and, and share as well. And I've got updates and stuff like that for you guys uh, coming. Lots been happening. So more in the pipeline, more videos on the way, especially as things settle down. And now that is my goodbye. All right. Thank you.